Okay, I've just got down to where I'm going to fish, down at Bennington Lakes. I'm going to do the intro. This is going to be after the intro, but before, you know, I'm filming it before. But I'm just going to quickly get a, a rod in the water. So I've just started with a two and a half pound test curve rod, Shakespeare 7000 reel. I've just got um, 50 pound shock leader on there. There's 20, 25 pound Shakespeare salt main line. I'm just going to put a float on and it's got a couple of LG weights on the bottom. I just started with one 40 pound wire trace and I've just gone for I made it some a uh, bit more ethical sort of traces. A single 30 circle hook and a uh, size 2 treble. I've crushed all the barbs down on there. So I'm just going to go for a sardine. I'm just going to set the depth. I'm just this is where I'm at. Lake two. I thought I'd try down here because the wind's pushing in this corner, as you can see. It's pushing. It's going that way. So I'm going to get one to the left round here, and then probably one out of that in the bay there, and we'll try. And if not, later on we can go out in the middle. Okay, I've got that. Out just off the end of the reeds, not too far. I've just set the depth. Should be just on the bottom. I've just got like a two pronged attack, so I've got very, very light bobbing. Slightest movement on there, and I've got a drop off on both ones. I'm going to use a drop off, so again, as soon as that, this is clutch is set loose. Just on a ticker. So any movement on this, let me just zoom out. Any movement on that, look. Slightest bit of movement on there. Just lifting that, and that's just setting that off nicely. But let's just. I've got the float to sit and look at. All right, I've got to get set the other other rod set up. Sort this absolute mess out, and then we'll uh, come back and do an intro. <laughs> we have an odd way round of doing it. I don't know if you can see me all right. I've just got down to walk up. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Nigel from the Norfolk Fishing Channel. And if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. Today I'm just out uh, down at Blickling Lakes in Norfolk. It's near Fakenham. Just out uh, on Lake 2. I'm not sure what it's called, I think. The main lake or something. It's about half past 
seven, quarter to eight. Gates open at seven o'clock. Someone just comes around for your money. I'm just down doing a bit of pie kid. Um, we've just got two floats out at the minute. Both just popped on the bottom. Just setting up the gear. Um, unfortunately, I was going to bring me a spinning rod and some laws and that, but looking at the website yesterday, it's just no law fishing or no spinning, which is a bit, bit of a disappointment, but I suppose there's a lot of carpers on here. Um, there's four or five other people carping, so probably don't want you walking around and casting the law here, there and everywhere. But it's very, very, uh, very clear again. It's always like tap water here. But I've just started on close, and what I thought I'd do is, this right hand one, I'm going to cast around in a minute, I'll turn you around. And uh, if not, I will uh, switch that over to a ledged bait and put that out in the middle um, with a big bit of mackerel or herring. I've just got sardines on them both at the minute. Um, this is going to have a nice chill day. Um, Let's just wait for a take really, the both the rods are out, it's just sitting and waiting now. So I'll switch you around. So the left rod's just off to the off the reeds there. Let me just get this. Move my hand. Okay, look at look at the water. Absolutely crystal clear. I mean, that's probably about two foot as well. And it's ice cold. So I think now the sun's up and I've seen the clarity of the water. Um, I think I have to go a lot further. The second float there. I'm going to cast that out into the bay. Um, yeah, as I say, with the clarity of the water, it's a bit of a shame. And I might have been better off going off the other side, but I don't know. I don't know what it's like here. This is, seems to be a bit of a shallow bay, but um, I think if there's any sort of silver fish, they would be in the deeper water, keeping out of the way of predators, so any prey. So. Yeah, I don't think they'd be hanging around in a shallow bait at this time of year they'll be in the deeper water with all the roach and stuff I have bought a, a whip with me a little six meter whip and a, and a rig but there's no way I'm going to be able to even, even if I get out to on the end of here I can still see the bottom it's not deep enough so there's plenty let me see the because I always see plenty of fish topping in this area over here. Right, I think the guy's here to collect my money. So, I'm just going to have a little scratch my head and have a think. I might have to see if I can go around there and catch a roach or two from the next peg if I can. Because I'd like a few roach to go on the hook. It says you're allowed to use live bait as long as it's uh, from the venue, this venue. Hello. Morning. What are you doing? Hello. You want to get any closer to me? Good morning. You on my feet? <laughs> hey, you want some bread? Hmm? 
You can see the whole slices of bread, can't you? That's what you're after. Oh, no. sneaky. And you can see the whole packet of bread, can't you? You look fat then. <laughs> Cheeky. Okay guys, it's coming up to nine o'clock. Just pay the bailiff. It's really shallow down there, so clear. And they're gonna bring a truck in a minute and start pumping into that peg. So I've just moved around the bay. I'll show you here. And I'm I was a bit peed off when I had to move, but I've only taken a punk, I've just bunged everything in the car, literally. It's such a deep bay here. I'll switch you around in a second. But I've literally just cast this one in here. Just literally cast it in. And it was too shallow. I put another two foot on it. I cast it out. I was down here, setting the bobbins. I saw the float glide away. I struck. Which I shouldn't have done, I know, it's my fault. Missed, I had felt it, missed it, pulled out, uh, taking the head off the sardine. So I've just cast it out again. But uh, straight away, I'll show you, I'll move you around. There's so much more depth here, a lot more depth. I can get the whip out of here. I'm just going to mix some ground bit up in a minute with some of the uh, hemp and a little bit of sweet corn and I've got sweet corn and bread for the hook, that's what I've got. I've used all my dead maggots and all the rest of it. But I might have a, another cast of the other rod down the left hand bay if they're, if they're down the edges, if it's deep in the edges and then we'll go further out later on but that's a really good sign. I've literally been here in two minutes and the float sailed away. It didn't feel massive. It didn't feel massive. but it's big enough to take that float under. <laughs> right, I'm gonna get the other rod set up and get set out again. Right, I've just uh, refreshed the baits, put fresh baits on. Just cast that one back down to the right hand side. I've just put a sliding ledger on the left run rod. I'll show you where they are in a minute. I'll just keep, uh, as well, I'm keeping feeding just my six metre whip line with just a little bit of ground bait with some hemp and tears in there a couple of grains of sweet corn in there but uh, I think I'll probably just keep feeding that for 45 minutes an hour before I go on it because I don't think they're going to come in um, it's off the shelf I'm fishing on the bottom of the shelf the, the first shelf but with it being cold I'd imagine they're right f further out into the middle of the lake I'll quickly show you where they are. Yeah, I'm glad I moved. It just looks so much more promising and inviting in this peg. So I've got my boat out there, probably about 35, 40 yards. That's just a uh, I cast it out three or four times just to make sure, without any bait on it, just to make sure I was nicely on the bottom, not too much over depth. Um, just kept moving the sliding stop knot up, up the line until the float popped up. And the other one I've just got down to the right hand side. But this it seems to be a bit of a channel come through here. Don't know how this sort of like lake works. It's, it goes around like a horseshoe and around this side and then around that side. But it seems to be a bit of a flow pushing towards me. But uh, as was forecast, the rain's here again. I mean, in the middle, uh, let's put you there. 
in the middle of two storms at the minute. This is where we had Aisha and Jocelyn, and there's another one due. I'm sure they'll give it a name, but uh, there's no wind today. That's why I came out. It's supposed to rain for a couple of hours up until about 11 and hopefully dry up, dry up a little bit, but we'll see. The sky looks full again. The whole country's drowning. The amount of floods everywhere is unbelievable. I went, um, I went up north a couple of weeks ago, uh, up to Leeds and that, and drove over the River Trent, and you can hardly see the Trent uh, where the A1 bridges are and all them pits. It's just one big, massive. Well, it's, it's just like the sea, right, really. Um, but it's everywhere. It's just so much rain, so much rain in this country. The seven, oh. Shrewsbury again, and the Thurn, the Yare, the Bure. It's just rained for uh, well, it's basically rained since about um, May time, May you know May June. We had a couple of weeks in early June where it was nice, and the rest of the summer has been absolutely pants, absolute crap. A washout, and it's just. I think we had a, a week in July when I went fishing. I was lucky. I went from cold to absolutely roasting hot within about five days, and then back cold and raining again. And it's just rained and rained and rained and rained and rained. I think it's probably the wettest year on record. It must be. It's the, this year must be the, the wettest year on record. For the amount of downfall we've had, you know, throughout the whole year, it's just, it's been relentless. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this right hand rod, just switch the left rod onto the right pod, and cast this left rod over to the left, down this left side. Because literally that, that float went in and within uh, two minutes it disappeared, bit the head off the sardine. In uh, my anticipation <laughs> and excitement I, I struck, but no, I shouldn't have struck, I could have just wound, wound down to the felt it and then lifted. Must have been a 3-0 circle hook on there. Oh yeah, and it's it's uh, it's Thursday the twenty fifth of January, which means one thing: it's my birthday. So you know, if I'm due a pike or a nice fish, it's today. Come on, we got pants weather. I was up out early. I'm not even opening any cards or presents. I want a nice double figure pike to be my present. <laughs> So happy birthday to me, and I just want the alarms to uh, sing me a happy tune. Well, I think it's uh, pour myself a hot coffee time. And I was saying, I'm going to bring this right hand rod in and swap things around a bit. I'm going to keep a bit more busy now, I'm going to keep, keep an eye on the time. It's not a lot you can do when you're pike fishing. It's a real shame I couldn't uh, have a bit of a cast about for law rod and have a few spins. But okay, guys, it's eleven o'clock. A bit, a little bit slow at the minute. But I've, uh, I've been giving it sort of twenty-minute casts. I've just cast this right on one back along the bank but as far as I can get it safely just put a bit more depth on it and I put a two uh, two LG shots just to sit that float better I'll show you in a minute and the left hand rod I've just cut up one of the bits of heron in half and put the head section on since that last fish took the head off the sardine so it's still got the guts in it and everything, and this other half I'll probably put on the right hand rod in a bit. But I've just cast that one out as far as I can whack it, 
It's a nice big bit of herring. I'll just put a bit of that bait, bait floss on it. Yeah, that's it in a minute. All I'm gonna do now, sit here, pour myself a nice hot flask of soup. I've got a nice spicy tomato and minestrone. I'll do one packet of each. Good bit of white pepper in there. Bit of chili powder and some chili flakes. Some extra croutons. That's lovely. These flasks keep hot all day long, brilliant. As long as you warm the flask when you boil the kettle, quarter fill it with boiling water, put the lid on it, give it a shake, leave it. Then I make the soup in a jug jug in the microwave for three minutes and it's absolutely boiling away like hell. Straight into the flat, pour the water out of the flask, straight in and that just keeps hot for about 12-15 hours. Easy, boiling hot. But I think it's going to be quiet now for up until about two o'clock I would imagine. Well, I don't think we're going to get any bites between now and 2, 3 o'clock. Could be wrong. I wish I would have come to this peg first, but I don't know. I've never been to this lake before. I fish Basil Todd Lake, but I know there's eight or nine lakes here and but the first time on this main lake and first time I've even seen it today so you just don't know where to I mean I was the reason I picked that peg over there this morning was because you can see now the wind's pushing in um, and I thought that might bring the fish this way but I didn't realise it's such a sa shallow sandy bay that little bit over there and all that's Apparently the guy saying this bit here is a lot deeper, which it is. Well, I've got herring on there, sardine on that one. Sardine did, <coughs> excuse me, quite spicy. The old chilli flakes kicking at the back of the throat there. Sardine did the trick before. Well, I've got that one on a ledger. This has got about one and a half ounce bomb on there. I say, I just keep putting the stopping up till the floats on the surface. Rain would ease up. Okay, it's quarter past eleven. What I've been doing is, because I don't think I'm going to catch any roach down here. It's, I'll be better off on a feeder or a lot further out, a little maggot feeder or something. But uh, I made up all the ground baits. So I thought rather than just chucking it away at the end of the day, or I just start making up little nuggets like that. I just fired three or four around the float. I, mean, I don't expect it, well, not sort of like attract the pike directly, but even if it sort of like attracts a load of small fish or fish into the area, start nibbling away on the little bits of coconut and hemp and tears and crushed coriander and all the rest of it in here and crumb and that. Even if it just brings some interest into this swim. I just put four down there. One down beside the float there, and then I've got loads of loads of sardines and bait today, and herring and that. And I just cut some fish chunks up and put about eight, nine chunks of fish beside the float down there, just to get a bit of scent in the water. And as I say, rather than just waste the ground bait, 
at the end of the day I might as well just I don't want to put too much in but every sort of half an hour put two or three just catapult it in and around the float if that just bring a few little roach and bird and other bits and pieces in to feed on the bits of ground bait you know nothing to lose so To do it all the time in Germany. Um, I'm sure it was Van der Nijm, but he used, he used to do a blood ground bait. I don't know if they stopped doing it because of EU law. Or it was a it was pretty hundred percent sure it was Van der Nijm. But, um, it was like it was dark red colour with crushed hemp in it and breadcrumbs. I think it had ox blood in it. I think that's what I remember. Uh, used to use it all the time. It was, it was brilliant for all sorts, of, not just pike and perch, it was, it was a good ground bait, but uh, I don't see many people using it in the UK or here of using it, I mean, you do it for sea fishing, put a bit of rubber dubby and chum and that. Thought, especially when it's like this, I mean, not so much in the summertime and spring and that, when, it, when late spring, summer, autumn, early autumn, when the water's warm and the pike are active and chasing, but when it's cold, just a little bit of scent in the water and a few fish particles and that's not going to not gonna go amiss, it's all going to help, isn't it? Especially if you're targeting a big, a big venue, a big lake or a big river where you, you know, it's like fishing a needle in a haystack. If you can put some scent in the water and attract some fish in, it's, you're just uh, increasing your chances. But, well, it's just maybe it's just psychological, isn't it? At the end of the day, you try to make something happen. Keep active. You know, if you just sit here and hope for a, a take or not, but I mean. But it's all psychological, isn't it? If you think it makes a difference, then it might make a difference. And this rain hasn't stopped, and I don't think it's going to look at the sky. I mean, it just looks like a rain all day kind of sky. It's just, it's just full. Need one for my birthday. I'll be happy for uh, another take, another decent take on camera. bringing the one that's straight out in front of me in but what I'm doing when I'm retrieving it I'm just giving it a real slow wobble like you would if you're wobbling a dead bait just in case there's anything you know you go past anything you know rather than just winding it straight in I'm just sinking and drawing it and wobbling it in the water is literally ice cold I put my hand in it this morning to uh, wash my hands 
There's one thing I did forget is a rag. Some rags again. Mm -hmm. so I'm just going to sort of fan cast this. I'm going to go a bit further out to the right. In. Pretty much in line where that geezer is. Fresh bait on. Sort this out. That, that's pretty good. That's quite a new one. Mm. I'll go with it for the minute. No, nope. I don't know what I have to do. I've got a shock leader on here. Just like when you see fishing, you make sure it's at the back of the spool. Otherwise, it. Uh, It's just a 50 pound shot leader. Got a 20 pound mono. The other one's 50 pound braid straight through. Let me check the lob. I had one take as soon as I got here because I was round at that peg but they're going to pump in in a minute. Okay. I've cast down there, two minutes, sailed away but I bumped out of it. I was, I was a bit eager. <laughs> they got a 20 in here do you think? So what well, I read on the website yeah there's some yeah. good 20s in here but uh, that didn't feel like a 20 but no. felt like five or six pound but it's way better stop though, it's meant to be dry now. Yes, I well, know, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, you too, bud. Set. I think a lot of the pike anglers have all had the same idea with all the broads and the rivers and all the rest of it just totally and out of sorts and mucked up all coming to still waters
about quarter past ten. Normally I'd say the window of opportunity is uh, over, but we're on a commercial, we're on a carp, carp lake predominantly, but there's big pike in here, there's always everything in here, roach, rud, hide, carp, uh, probably some big perch in here as well. But, On a cold, dank day like today, they could be feeding at any time, I suppose. I'll try to the left for a bit. I'm just going to give that right hand side a rest. I know I'll keep pounding a float and bait over there. But we'll, I'm going to go and grab another coffee and I'll just work this, fan cast it around try and cover a bit of water because I think if there's going to be a, a pike around or you land it on its nose as I say I think within a couple of minutes it will take it I think my float just moved then it swayed backwards and forwards from side to side it hasn't gone under but it's definitely movement on the float Eight bits of eight chunks of uh, sardine down there beside the float. We just walked around and bunged it over. You have to keep catapulting ground bait over there. I was thinking about trying the other tail end of herring, and I've stuffed it with a load of cork just to pop it up slightly. I've got it here. I've got a big bit of cork in here. Just pop that up a little bit, make it sort of semi buoyant. But what I'll probably do is before I finish here and that, have a good drive around the lake and see where it goes around there and on the other side as well. Anything else has got to locate them. It's got to, over here. I mean, the gate's open at seven o'clock, and I reckon you know you've got three hours max before that, that feeding window closes down till this evening. be better doing a 24 hour especially uh, this time of year a couple of hours into darkness but the gate shut at seven so seven to seven for day tickets What I was thinking is, if and when the rivers get back, just normality, which is probably going to be a little while yet. I'm going to have a go up to Rockland, St Mary, and then it's a long walk, 
but I've, I've got my fishing barrow, uh, the sea fishing one, and I literally take two or three rods and as little as, little as gear as I can, uh, have a go up to the main river. I've had some big perch out of there, and I know there's uh, some massive pike in there. Where it goes into the stakes or the cup. Probably be a good place to do an overnight because it's way out of the way. Way out of the way, it's, it's, it's good, it's nearly half an hour walk. Travel light. Take a law rod. I've got my chest waders. I was thinking there's one or two spaces right around the very back of the broad as as it goes onto the stave towards the river where it's one peg, two pegs, where you can get in and have a cast out into the uh, into the broad itself. Ten to twelve. So we just knocked that float again. We just cast the heron out. I think that's going in it. There's a lot of crayfish in here. Well, it's definitely way too big for a crayfish, I know that. Come on. See it, my float's just on the edge of that ripple. A bit of another shelf out there goes a bit deeper, so I put another two foot on there. And the right hand one. Just down the edge there. And again I put another couple of foot on that because it was drifting a bit. It's still drizzling with rain. It hasn't hailed up yet. It's supposed to be dry. But I thought the guy over there. I thought he was carping, but he's not. He's piking as well. I see him chucking out dead baits as well. So. A couple of guys in the little chalet over there. I don't know if that's. You have to rent that out for a couple of nights or what? Nice little hide. I've got these set. I've cast that out, put the rod under the water. So it's quite tight, so if I just turn it, I'm not going to do it, the float will disappear under the water. But as soon as anything touches that now, 
I've got the back drop off and then bobbin, there's no weight on the bobbin, it's just light plastic bobbin. Ratchet's set loose to run, but I'll be on it straight away anyway. So. Well, that's it at the minute. Well, where's this wind coming from? It's supposed to be very light. 10 kilometers an hour today. The bloody weather forecast are garbage, isn't it? We couldn't get it bloody... I think they just uh, did the old pin the old tail on the donkey thing, isn't it? They close their eyes, swirl it around the thing and stab it on the bloody board. And uh, Oh, today's going to be sunny. Try to keep an eye on my float to my right because there's quite a few uh, more hens and coots around diving around. Um, make sure he doesn't dive around anywhere near my float. Okay guys, I'm just going to refresh my bait, it's about quarter past twelve, or coming up to twelve. So, on this rod here, which is a Shakespeare beat, a ten foot spin, that's rated to a hundred grams. I've just got a single 4 circle hook, a size 2 treble, that's a 40 pound wire, we've got a quick Quick link, C link there. I've got two LG shots there. On a 50 pound braid. I've got a buffer bead here, or two buffer beads. Float sliding up and down the line. I've got a top bead just above the float, just for the stop knot. And I've got a st stop knot up the edge of the rod tip so probably about eight foot deep let's go get a bait on and then we'll get a cast out yeah that's one ready to go out it's got the cork in there i'm gonna try this one as far as i can get it down the left all right guys i'm all packed up back at the car just got home. Um, thought I'd sign off now. Yeah, it's been quiet. Um, I start feeling really tired. I had a long day, and I'm obviously birthday today. I had a few beers last night. But uh, yeah, it's really very quiet. I mean, I had the one bite and a drop run. As soon as I moved to that peg, um, I got a bite and the float sailed away nicely. I was just setting the bobbins and saw it beep and I thought oh it's just me and then I turned, looked up looked up the float and the float was sailing away but uh, I struck too early I think and uh, I shouldn't have struck at all I just lifted into it been using circle hooks and that and that bit the head off the sardine and half the sardine but I missed it I felt it for a minute oh, a sec for about 10 seconds and then it had gone and then uh, later on uh, about half an hour later I had a nice drop run uh, the sort of float just lifted out of the water and laid flat and it was wobbling again when I sort of picked, picked it up and wound into it I just felt some of it initially and then it just off so but uh, I'm not disappointed I enjoyed it um, you know it's not something I don't do often I, I don't do piking um, and that's sort of like the difficult thing is that I do a bit of everything so I'm not sort of hopping about from here to there. I think if I dedicated um, just 
specifically did piking or carping or course fishing, it'll probably have a lot more results. But I'm sort of like hopping around trying to do a bit, bit of this, bit of that, bit of that. No, which I wish I enjoy doing because I, you know, I enjoy mixing it up. I don't like just doing one thing week in, week out. You know, I like I like I love my beach fishing. I love going on the river, doing a bit of feeder fishing and pole fishing, whip fishing on the air and the beyond that, um, the bream and skimmers. But the rivers are way out of sorts and in flood and everything. Um, so I thought I'd try, you know, for... I thought I'd come and try for pike uh, this time of year. I will be back. If anything, it's just made me more determined to go and catch one. Because <clears throat> I haven't had one for a while. I'm on a bit of a run of bad luck at the minute. But yeah, it's just made me more determined to go out and get one. And I'll probably wait till the weather warms up a bit and dries up a bit. And uh, looking at the website, I'll probably go February, sort of, I think I'll probably go end of February, March, before the season finishes, um, and give it another couple of goes there, and give it a, an all-day, an all-day job. But uh, that's it for now. Uh, no fish, uh, again. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to sort of like, uh, break this run of bad luck sooner or later, but... I'll see you again in another video. All the best, guys. Take care. Cheerio. And if you liked it, please press like and subscribe. It all helps. Um, just keeps me going. Gives me a bit of encouragement. I'll see you again in another video.